Shalom. We've got about 19 or so minutes in this. And we want to continue with the, the answering of the question, did the white man give the Bible, like did the white man introduce the Bible to black people during uh, slavery, or did they give the Bible? Two different semantic ways. We see Brother Polite and the AOC Hebrew Israelites has a very good Sardinetta uh, production on Sardinetta TV 7, so check that out. But in pausing it for a moment and touching on a part one of uh, um, did the white man give the Bible to black people, basically no. Um, black people basically took the Bible and we reclaimed the Bible and before the white man, the European, gave us the pastors and their own pastors and preachers, their own blind shepherds. But once we were given the blind shepherds and people were blind to that word, but originally the white man so-called did not want black people, right? The lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the black Hebrews or the enslaved Hebrews to know how to read or understand language. And you can find further evidence on that in Wooly Lynch letters, the Wooly Lynch letters or how to make a slave under the, the subsection controlled language. But we want to go one step further. We have Bob here, right? Burhana Selassie, Bob Marley right here reading the Bible, right? You know, reading and studying the Bible. Now, let's get to the half of the story, the half of our black Hebrew Israelite story, the, the, the other half of our redeemed Ethiopian Hebrew, Ethiopian Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite Rastafari nation story. And what we wanna address right here, right, um, is the subject matter of the Hebrew establishment that ruled the Ethiopian Empire, or more fully, more correctly, the black Hebrew establishment that ruled the Ethiopian Israelite-ish empire till the time of Selassie, till the time of Kedemah, we had Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the king of Israel on that throne of great King David and ruling in what is known as the Solomonic um, dynasty right, of Ethiopia. Now, here is a clip that we had picked up on the internet, the physical appearance of ancient Israel, right? More than that, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, witnessed by 72 nations, because this is not an isolated incident, this is the half of the story that the Gentiles, the Goy, the Goyim under COINTELPRO, the Anglo-American establishment, the so-called, uh, quote, New World Order. It's not the New World Order. New World Order is the world order of Yaakov, is the world order of Israel, is the world order of, for lack of a better word, but a good description, the black Messiah. That's why they had the COINTELPRO. COINTEL means counterintelligence. So what we're teaching here and what we're showing here in the evidence, we should have already known. Now, I got to know this information. Hallelujah. You know, but all of us should know this information. This would be what we'd be teaching I and I, our children, right? So here we see um, the picture of the King of Kings, right? In the form of great King David. The word says that he would, let's get the scripture right here. We want to show you the scripture. We don't want you just to accept what we are saying, but to look at the facts and go to the seed. Right? And we're getting to the root of the truth, the half of the story that has not been told since I and I ancestors, the enslaved Ethiopian Hebrews, was brought to this Western Hemisphere circa 1492 and thereabouts. Now, 400 years, the Son of Man, 1892. But here, Amos chapter 9 states this right here. Are ye not, Amos 9 and 7, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians to me, to I, O children of Israel, saith Yad Hey Wehe or Yahweh, right? He who be who he be, his divine majesty. It says here, furthermore, have not I brought up Israel 
out of the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt in your Bible. Give it. And the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Kir, right? Or Kir. Now, the next verses are very, very significant, but we're going to move forward to verse 11. So we're going to go to Amos 9, 11. Amos 9, 11. Yes, 9, 11. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. And here is the part four, and it speaks of the future Malkut, the future kingdom, the future Mengis, the future government, right? The future kingdom blessing. One, it's Adonai's return and the reestablishment. Get this right here. The reestablishment of the Davidic monarchy, right? The reestablishment of the Davidic monarchy, the monarchy, the monarchy of great King David. The Bible says that the throne of David will never, never lack a man, right? A man to sit upon that throne of great King David. So even after the events of 70 AD, even after the Tisha B'Av, even after the captivities of the Ethiopian Hebrews or black Hebrews or enslaved Ethiopian enslaved Israelites over here in the Western Hemisphere. And we say, keep saying Ethiopian, and we know some of the black Hebrews say, we're not Ethiopian, the Ethiopians are Kushites, and we're not Kushites. They're looking at a particular dated part of our ancient story, and they're not following the footsteps of the Lamb throughout the history. If we follow the footsteps of the Lamb throughout the history, we'll find the footsteps of the Lamb, right? reaching Ethiopia. David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David. And it is that David II, Eben Hakim, Baina Lechem, also known as Minulik, that renewed the kingdom of David in the highlands of the biblical land of Cush or Obia, Ethiopia, that good land. And the scripture for that, this is why we have those cryptic scriptures that so many have wrestled back and forth on where it speaks about princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall soon stretch forth our hands to God where it says that Ethiopia, this man was born there, Psalm 87 and, and elsewhere in the scripture, we have the even the scripture right here, Amos 9 and 7, once again I will read Are ye not as children, right? The Bane of the Ethiopians or the Kushim to me. So Yahweh, Yah, is saying to us, right? So when we say we're Ethiopian Hebrews and some of the black Hebrew Israelites go off on a rant and a tangent and getting caught up on too much ignorance, having some a little truth here, right? But not studying and showing themselves the proof. They need to be ashamed for that because they are robbing the glory from the Almighty's word and also robbing the people of the full vision, not their vision, not the way they want to see it, but the way the Almighty has has shown it to us, all right? Because no man knoweth the day nor the hour, right? Rastafari is the second coming, right? So right here, the future kingdom blessing, right? The future kingdom blessing, Adonai's return, and the reestablishment. You see, reestablishment, means that it was established already. And this will be a re, again, establishing of the Davidic monarchy. So verse 11, Amos 9, 11, it says, In that day, in that day, a prophetic day, we say that day is November 2nd, 1930, and the, the coronation of Moa and Bessazah in Negedit Yehuda, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Edomawi Haile Selassie, the first power of the Trinity, Siyume Egeziabihar, the elect of Hashem, the elect of the source, or God, if you please, Negusa Neges Ze Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia. Let us be reminded that Ethiopia is an empire. We had explained this before that the foundation of the empire is the family, right? The family. Right, the family is a circle of relatives or those who are re related, whether by blood in in the in the flesh sense, like the Old Testament sense, by blood, or by blood and by spirit, in spirit and in truth. In the new covenant, 
sense. But we have family, right? Then we have what's called like clans, right? Clans, families, mispaka, and clans forming tribes. So families and clans forming tribes and tribes forming nations and nations forming an empire. That's very important when we say emperor, we say emperor, Haile Selassie. We say Emperor Selassie. We have to note that Ethiopia, right? True Ethiopia is an empire. And what is an empire? Empire has many nations there. So this is what we have the Cushitic, right? Or the Hamitic side of Ethiopia as well as the Shemitic side of Ethiopia. Actually, the rulers, right, of true Ethiopia, the black Hebrew or the Ethiopian Hebrew rulers of Ethiopia regard themselves as Shemites and as children of Shem. Now that backs up what we have right here in Amos 9 and 9 and 7. Are ye not as the children of the Cushim? If you read this in the Hebrew, it be the Cushim. The Cushim to me, O children of Israel, saith yod Hey wow Hey saith Yahweh. So that means that even though some black Hebrew Israelites or others might not want to accept the Ethiopian Hebrew connection, what does this word say? This is Yahweh speaking, saying, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me? It's not saying to he, she, and the old lady. So this is why folks will have their stupidity, right? But do not rob, right, the king of kings of his glory, right? So here it says, In that day, Will I raise up the tabernacle, right? The tabernacle of David or Dawid, right? Dawit, that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Now we have to remember that the speaker here, right? The speaker here is the Almighty. The Almighty. The Father, the Av, the Bain, the Ruach HaKodesh, HaShalosh HaKadosh, right? The Holy Trinity, the One God, Yahweh Ahad, is saying very clearly here that He will do this. He's not saying He's going to send an angel, or He's going to send a messenger, or He's going to send somebody else. He says, in that day will I raise, raise is a key word in connection with the new covenant, the Brit Hadasha, and resurrection. Right? Um, stop the rise. Right? That's what he talked about. Stopping the what? Rise. Cointelpro was about stopping the rise of the black Messiah or the true Ha Moshiach. Right? In that day will I raise up, right? Raise up the tabernacle, the tent, the dwelling, the tabernacle of the well beloved of Dawit. Right? Dawit. That is fallen and close up. The breaches thereof. You remember when the when, when a band of Hebrews and Israelites returned in the time of uh, Ezra or Ezra and Nehemiah, Nehemiah or Nehemiah, that there were breaches. They had to repair the wall of Jerusalem or the wall of Jerusalem. And breaches are like there are broken parts, a lot of broken parts. You know, there's a lot of, like you have a wall that has a lot of openings, a lot of spaces, you know, because it's broken down. So that's going to be repaired, right? And I will raise up, again, the word raise. We did a series on the tabernacle of uh, David, right? And the Negus, the Negus, which is the Ethiopic for, for king, the Melech in the Hebrew. Check that out on the RTS, Rastafari Sabbatical, and link it and retweet it and co-labor with I and I and sharing this with others on your Facebook and on your Twitter, you know, retweet it and share it out with others, my brothers and sisters. That's another way to support and to co-labor with I and I, right? It doesn't matter whether it's little things or it's great things. It's where the willing, you know, the willing heart is, the heart and the mind is. So here again, in verse 11, 9, 11, says, I will raise up his ruins. Whose ruins? Speaking of David, Dawit, right? His ruins, even the Ethiopian ruins. And I will build it as in the days of old, as in the days of the Kedem, right? In the days of the Kedemah, 
right? Or the old days, the days of the ancient days. Here's what's interesting. Verse 12 says this, that they, this is speaking of we, I and I and we, right? As the redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite, or with a new name, the Rastafari nation, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, the remnant of Edom. Now, I and I, black Hebrew brothers, Israelite brothers and sisters, have been telling you about who is Edom, right? And the Edomites. So they, speaking of we, will possess the remnant. There'll be a remnant of Edom. There'll be a remnant of Edom that will be the possession of the reestablished Davidic monarchy and of all the heathen and of all the Goyim. This is why Huaria Paulos or Paul. Shaul says in the New Testament until the number of the Gentiles, the Goyim, the, the heathen, right? The heathen and all the heathen which are called, right, by my name, right, by his name. Revelation says that he will have a new name and he speaks about the blasphemy against his name. You know, for the JC business and the CBGB, talking about Caesar Bogiers and all the counterfeit antichrist, Satan, you know, Satan's deception of the world, flesh, right? The world and those who are in the flesh. Now here it says this, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen and of all the Goyim, which are called, right? Many are called few will choose and therefore few will be of that remnant but of those that are of that remnant they are those who are called by my name even by that new name of Rastafari saith Yahweh saith he who be who he be he will become what he needs to be to fulfill the prophecy right who are you O man to question the Almighty, right? It says, or question Selassie, or question His Majesty. Saith Yahweh that doeth, right, that doeth this. Now, I want to point this out at first, even before going to the second part of this particular um, study right here. The black Hebrew establishment, right, that ruled the Ethiopian, the Israelitish Empire. Right? Cause we need to understand this because some are very much confused about what we mean. They're confusing the terminologies Kush and Tobia or Ethiopia. They're not recognizing that Hebrew in itself is an Afro-Shemitic language. And I keep repeating that. Some people heard this almost like ad nauseum, but don't get nauseated by hearing this because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of HaMoshiach, hearing by the word of HaElohim, Baruch, Baruch, Baruch Hu. Amen? Are you with I and I? So this is the point that we want to make right here is that Afro-Shemitic, don't you recognize Afro, the, the, the Kalmite or the Hamite part or the Kushite part and the Shemitic elements. We see this in the very first books of the Bible, we find this within Genesis. We find this in one level with Hagar and Abraham. But at a better level, we find this with Joseph and Asenath. They had the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And we find that Don in Revelation, I think, gets dropped out. But then Ephraim gets brought in and many will say, well, Ephraim was a half tribe. They were half Hamitic. They were Kamites. They were Egyptians, you know, and Israelites. So they wasn't full Israelites, so forth. And so forth. But then others will say, well, it was what their father was and Joseph was their father. But from Job, from the Almighty's perspective, we have to look at it that his thoughts, as heaven is higher than the earth, so are his thoughts. So we need to have a change of mind, right? A change of mind and, and renew our minds by study, right? And this is a very important aspect that is little told because it will cause, once you receive it and you know the truth of it, it will cause the black Messiah to rise. It will cause Hamushia mindfulness. It will cause the true Christ in his kingly character consciousness to rise amongst you. And that was the whole point of what was called the COINTEL Pro. You understand? The COINTEL Pro. So that you would not recognize, right? 
the king of kings. You would not recognize Kedamawi Hala Selassie. You would not recognize the sign and the seal. And they would be able to, as the scripture says, um, you know, to go on with their, you know, iniquity, you know, to, it, it, by you not knowing, right, who you be and you not knowing, they cannot tell you this. This is why Father inspires us, Abba inspires us and many of us out there, although we might disagree on certain particular points, it is a beautiful time in the consciousness, right, of the lost sheep. It's like the best of times and the worst of times, depending on your orientation, right? He put before us two ways, right? His way, Yah's way, and then you can always choose your way. My brothers and sisters, consider carefully Yah's way and not I and I own way, because I and I own way has gotten us from the very beginning into this shittim or this situation that we are in as the lost sheep, the lost found. Some of us are found because we find the truth, we accept it. Others have heard the truth, right? But they had no faith in it and did not study to get to know it. So they basically go back into the so-called Babylonian matrix. In other words, we're taking the so-called red pill, right? And we're going, as they say, we're going deep in order to make those heights. We have to go to the foundation, to the foundation. I and I must go down to the bedrock, right? To the rock so we can stand on the rock of the word and not on sinking sand. So in the second part of this, I would like to also bring forward this rate here. Let me see if I can get this rate up here. Let me show you this rate here. So we have this, there we go. Let's see if we can bring this around right here. Okay. The queen of Sheba, right? The queen of Sheba and the only son, Minulik. All right, let's see if we can. Okay, we're trying some new kind of technology right here all right but here here it works right here now this this is where we really want to get to the kibra neges right the half of the story right that has not been told now this is being it says right here the book of the glory of kings parentheses kibra neges a work which is alike the traditional history of the establishment of the religion Right, or the Hymenot, the Emuna, the faith of the Ibrawian or the Hebrews in Obia or, or Ethiopia. Right? This is why it says, Are you not, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me? Yahweh is saying to him, right? So it doesn't matter whether this camp or that camp wants to accept the truth or what Yahweh's word, we're giving you the proof. Right. So you can study to show yourself approved. Right. And know the truth for yourself. Because whom how Moshiach has freed is free indeed. But look at the and after the and it says right here, it says and the pattern of sovereignty, the pattern of sovereignty, which is now universally accepted in our.